Rec Tech's more than a grill. It's a lifestyle. Smart grill technology. R-E-C-T-E-Q.com. Rec Tech with a Q.com. Kevin Clark's an NFL writer, formerly of the Wall Street Journal. Then Bill Simmons found him at the ringer. Very funny guy. Has great insights. And he is now joining us live on a Monday. So you have, you're kind of, you're known in our industry as you have a tweet you did a couple years ago about the Seahawks. And it is funny because it's so true. My sister didn't like football until Russell Wilson arrived. And now she texts me all Sunday. She's like, these games are crazy. I don't know how you stand this sport. It's nuts. And your tweet is the Seahawks have literally never played in a normal game. And I'm watching yesterday and I'm like, Russell didn't even play well just until the end. What what do you does it speak well of them or is it just Russell Wilson's the life preserver for a constantly in flux chaotic football team? How do you see the Seahawks today? I think it depends on the game. I was stunned when I saw the stat yesterday that since 2012 Russell Wilson has the most game winning drives, but he beat out Matthew Stafford for that. And when you think about <laughs> Matthew Stafford's career Versus Russell Wilson's career, that's absurd. I mean, Matthew Stafford should always be playing from behind. Russell Wilson should never be playing from behind. And the fact that they had the equal amount of opportunities is kind of is crazy to me. So I think that Russell Wilson, his ability to score points very quickly this year has put them in position to succeed. Uh, obviously, the let Russ Cook thing is happening this year. Uh, my take on this let Russ, let, let Russ Cook thing is that the reason he's cooking is because the restaurants are closed. He has to cook <laughs> because there's no defense. There's no pass rush. They don't have a choice. I think Bra Pete Carroll and Brian Schottenheimer would play a different brand of football if they could, but he's got to score points and score points quickly. That's why they went on that 21 to nothing run last uh, yesterday in the third quarter. That's why they had to have that 90-yard that drive at the end after the Vikings failed on fourth and inches. He has to be the leader of that team in all facets because nobody else will. So why do they play such weird games? Because Pete Carroll likes to keep it close. He likes to play a physical brand of football. And then when he has to, he's going to let Russell Wilson win the game. It, it shouldn't be Matt Stafford, but it is. Yeah. So I'm watching Kansas City and the Raiders yesterday, and a lot of the wise yeah. guys in Vegas did like the Raiders. So, you know, there were some people, and I'm obviously not smart enough to do that because my picks were awful again. But I will say this. I was very critical when the Raiders went and got a coach who'd been out for a decade and a GM that would never been a GM. But, Kevin, you start watching the Raiders' offensive pieces, and it's like they, they're not missing on any of them. Like, they, got, they have talent everywhere, and it's all young. And should we take the Raiders for real? Yes, we should. Now, real means different things here. Can they make the playoffs? Yes. Are they an AFC contender to play in the championship game or something? No. But when I look at Henry Ruggs, I saw that quote from John Gooden after the game where they said, he's not here to run hitch routes. He's here to push <laughs> the tempo down the field. He had, you know, a contested catch yesterday. He had that 72-yarder. I mean, this is the type of guy. And there are not many of these guys throughout the league who can change the offense, who can unlock how an offense should play. Derek Carr has been criticized for not going down the field nearly enough over the past three, four years. Ruggs is the type of guy who can get open deep, and he can make any quarterback a deep thrower, including Derek Carr. So I think that these skill guys, whether that's Josh Jacobs, whether that's Henry Ruggs, just, just some of the guys Mayock has hit on. You know, I, I, the joke about the Raiders is they just draft from the, the college football playoff. They watch three games a year, and they say, <laughs> let's, let's get the Alabama guys, let's get the Clemson guys. But that's not a bad strategy right now. I mean, I, I kind of like this group they put together. Yeah, say what you want, but Belichick for years has leaned on Urban Meyer guys and Nick Saban guys. So to your point, yes. you can do worse than drafting uh, Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson guys. Yep. So, you know, there's an old thing. We never tell our friends this, but it, we all have friends. But then there's the friends like we would trust uh, to take us to the hospital if we were ill or to the airport. And we won't tell our friends which one are in, a, in and out of that group. But it felt like yesterday with Jimmy Garoppolo. There's quarterbacks that can win games, and then there's quarterbacks who can win games, but the coach is always willing to take a phone call on another quarterback. And I watched Shanahan's body language yesterday, and I'm like, you can't unsee that from Jimmy Garoppolo. And they already slapped his hand with the adult film star and the fourth quarter stuff. And I do wonder if there's a little damage done with Garoppolo and Kyle, and it's... it's uh, He'll take phone calls going forward to replace him if somebody's out there. When you have Kyle Shanahan as a play caller, you should be judged very, very harshly. It's, it's like giving, uh, being given a Ferrari. You're driving down the highway, and there's Priuses passing you, right? That shouldn't be happening. Right. If you have Kyle Shanahan 
getting guys open, creating conflict with defenses. You should be hitting open guys. Now, he had the high ankle sprain. There's a history of quarterbacks coming back from that too early and sailing passes. I understand that. But I think that when you've got this offense, and listen, they've been decimated by injuries, but not on the offensive line. This offensive line should be better, and they should adapt to, to be able to play behind it at this point. The defense is a mess right now. I think that you, you, know, you they've gotten Kittle back. I think that there's there the pieces are there for them to be better than this, better than getting blown out by the Dolphins at home, letting Ryan Fitzpatrick get another $10 million deal next year uh, to, to, to keep some other rookie on the bench, wherever that may be. He'll be, he'll be starting in front of Trevor Lawrence next year because of his performance yesterday, right? Yeah. And so when I think about the Niners, I think they need to start looking at an upgrade. I think Jimmy Garoppolo with Kyle Shanahan can work, but it's got to be better than this. And, and at that price tag, you really have to start asking questions. So this sounds crazy. I said this. I think, Joy, I said this in the first hour, that I'm watching Matt Ryan yesterday, and we're going to blame Dimitrov for everything and Dan Quinn, but he threw a ball in the end zone, and it was like, Matt, You've been in this league for a decade. I'm seeing all these athletic kids. We'll watch Justin Herbert tonight. I see Lamar. I see Josh Allen. I see Russell Wilson. And now you couldn't move Matt Ryan next year because of the cap hit. It's like, you know, it's just a huge cap hit. But, I, you know, Kevin, I sit, I've been watching this league for a long time, and it, it's changing. And, and your, your quarterback, Phillip Rivers, looks washed completely. Yeah. And it really undoes, it undermines all the smart things the Colts have done. That, that doesn't matter. You, you can't have that quarterback. In Atlanta, would it be reasonable the next coach, you play Matty, but you start looking for his replacement? Does is that sound outrageous for a guy that was an MVP, or am I on to something? It's not outrageous at all. He's 35. Uh, that team is going to be about $35 million over the cap next year. And that's just, that's conservative because we don't, we don't know what the cap is going to be next year, but this team has a lot of talent and I'm intrigued to see how Arthur blank views this job. Does he see it as a teardown or does he want a kind of a, a mid career coach, almost like what Dallas did with Mike McCarthy. who can come in and try to maximize this talent because I think you could go either way. Calvin Ridley is very good. We know about Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, there's pieces on the defense. So, I think it is an intriguing job. I, I, I think they can win. They're not a Super Bowl team by any means in 2021 or 2022. But I think that you come into that job almost like Matt LaFleur was in Green Bay, where you try to maximize what you have, but you're keeping one eye on the future. I think that's the most important thing. You need that cap flexibility, but you also have talent right now that you can win with. So I think it's, it is a... I think it's a job. It's not Houston because there's no Deshaun Watson. But if I'm a sought-after offensive coordinator right now, I'm looking at Atlanta as potentially a very good job. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, we got to talk about Dak's injury. It's gutting. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. <clears throat> Andy Dalton actually is a, a very – you know, he's a, it's funny. He's like – I guess in the NBA, he'd be a Mike Conley. You can get 14 points. He's a good distributor. He'll play defense. He's a good leader. Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get Kyrie Irving, but there are – you know, this team's got weapons, and he's a good distributor. Um, I don't think he's Dak Prescott, but I don't think the gap is the Grand Canyon. It's more the Laurel Canyon. It's, it's, a, it's a canyon, but it's not the same. And I look at Dak and I think to myself, okay, he's going to get paid. He'll be back. He'll be fine. But is he? Do you worry that if they don't win this year and, I mean, are, are we sure in one year Mike McCarthy's the coach and Dak's the quarterback? I guess that's my question. I guess it comes down to the timetable on the injury, which according to Jane Slater is four to six months at this point. But I think that the tragedy of this injury is that this was the year that if you didn't appreciate Dak, you were going to start appreciating Dak because he was going to put up otherworldly numbers on a team where there was no defense, where the coaching was letting him down again, a second coaching staff doing that. And so I think this is going to be a special year as far as just appreciating Dak, and that's not going to happen now. Uh, hopefully Cowboys fans appreciated it, what he did in the first four weeks, and that we understand coming into negotiations next year, they probably franchise tag him again. Jerry and Stephen Jones have both said they want to keep him as the future in the last 24 hours. I believe them. So, yes, if I had to bet right now, they would run it back with McCarthy and Dak. I don't think they're going to sign him to a long-term deal uh, anytime before we see what that angle looks like going forward. Uh, but I think that they understand, as, as weird as this negotiation has been, they understand their best chance to win is getting Dak healthy instead of going into the lottery and trying to trying to you know draft a quarterback in the you know with, with in the second round or something like that and trying to find the next Andy Dalton. I didn't think this team was going to win the Super Bowl with Dak or without Dak. Their expectations for me have not changed. 
they're an NFC East favorite, and that means nothing to me because this team is not complete. <laughs> this team had no chance of go, uh, going into any uh, NFC contender and beating them. So this was just about Dak personally. Obviously, this guy pulls at 100% throughout the league. Everybody loves him. You saw that yesterday with you know Jason Garrett and all the Giants rushing over to, to, to give their condolences on the injury. Um, but I think that for me, nothing's changed. This is just a, a, a different look for this team this year it is a tragedy for Dak personally the league is better when guys can bet on themselves like Dak Prescott it would have been better for players if Dak Prescott played this year balled out and got 200 million dollars when yeah. he was in Dallas and elsewhere and so from from a player's perspective I think this really hurts I'm I'm, I'm saddened for Dak and for the future of, of quarterback negotiations because he had a real chance to reset the market I think this sets them back a year I think Dak gets franchise tagged and then eventually he gets that big deal it just comes a year later than we thought. Yeah. By the way, I still think Kansas City's the best team in the league, I think, or Green Bay. Um, I, you know, I had this thought yesterday. So I'm watching McCarthy and this team, and they're just there's just so many defensive lapses, and I thought to myself, mm, you know what? I know Aaron Rodgers can be a little prickly, but Aaron looks so good, and Dallas looks so dysfunctional, and I, I'm sitting there watching this with Aaron, and I'm like, maybe, maybe Green Bay's the best football team in this league. And we just, we just, Aaron was right, but in his sort of passive aggressive way, he, you know, the throwaways, the eye rolling. And I, and I, as I watched Dallas yesterday, I kept thinking of Green Bay, and I'm like, maybe Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers, maybe I'm nuts on this. Maybe they're the best team in the league. This morning, Kansas City, Baltimore, uh, Green Bay, I, I can't watch the Cowboys and McCarthy and not think about Aaron in the last two years together when they underachieved, and he's 17-3 and three since then. I can't stop thinking about it. Have we undervalued for the first time ever Aaron Rodgers is my question. Yes, and the Packers undervalued him by taking Jordan Love in the first round. And so you can say it was the media and hot take culture or whatever it was, but it was also the Packers who made that evaluation and said that we need to start drafting a first-round quarterback to start the succession plan, okay? So this is not just a media creation, okay? His own GM made that decision. So I think, yes, they they really have the capability to, to win the Super Bowl, quite frankly. Uh, I think that they have the pieces, and I think that it tracks with everything we heard coming into this season from GMs, coaches, scouts, assistants, which is that the guys who know what they're doing, the veteran quarterbacks who have continuity with their receivers will have an advantage and can take a little advantage, which is which normally exists from year to year by being a veteran. And it becomes a huge one because nobody has training camp. Nobody has OTAs. Nobody has padded practice like they normally do. And so Aaron Rodgers' ability to make something out of nothing, to make these incredible passes, it's becoming a huge, huge deal against flat-footed defense who don't know what they're doing. Uh, you know, defenses are just falling down. When I'm asking guys, like, what, what are defenses doing? Are they running simplified schemes? The answer is no, defenses are just confused right now. They don't know what's going on. And who takes advantage of confusion better than Aaron Rodgers? Who takes advantage of those free plays better than Aaron Rodgers? When something bad is happening on, on the field to a defense, Aaron Rodgers is smart enough to take advantage. And that's why he's having this incredible year. That's why he's an MVP candidate, and that's why I would not be surprised on February 8th or whenever the Super Bowl is played if he's a host in Lombardi. Yeah, it's weird. I watch McCarthy, and I cannot, I can't stop thinking about Aaron is 17-3 and three without him and looks better than yep. he's looked in six years. Kevin Clark, The Ringer, great stuff, bud. Appreciate you coming. I really like the pocket score. You brought your A game today for the show, and I really appreciate that. Nice. Hey, I got, I got to bring it for you, Colin. Very nice. Look at that. Very, very suave. It's European looking and adds some sophistication to our show. Much needed. Thank you, Kev. Kevin Clark. Anytime, Colin. Uh, Slow News Day pod video cast as well over at the Ringer. Uh, Joy Taylor with the news. No, 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 no.